Now, many of those who remain in Ukraine are now facing a dire food shortage. One aid agency warns that some towns have no more than three or four days worth of food. And 70 percent of the population of Kharkiv, for instance, and Sumy is entirely dependent now on food aid. Poultry maker MHP is getting meals inside conflict zones around Ukraine. It's said to be the largest food company still operating in Ukraine. Its uh, own trucks have been hit by Russian shelling. Think about that. MHP is the largest producer and exporter of chicken in Ukraine and the sixth largest in the world. It's giving away 330 tons of chicken a day to Ukrainians in need. MHP Chair John Rich joins me now. And I thank you for giving us some insight uh, into this. Uh, could you just, before we get to the need, and I'm sure it's immense, as an employer, can, can you please let me know what employees are going through? I mean, we have visions of them literally having to dodge bombs, whether it's to get to work or to get to the desperate people that need food. Well, look, frankly, it's not quite as serious as that, because what I'm trying to do tonight is give you a very accurate depiction of what it is like on the ground. Luckily for our operations, we're in the Western areas, and so we are not basically under day-in-day -day, uh, missile attacks. This has allowed the company to maintain as almost 80 to 90 per cent of its production capacity and most of its distribution operations. Now, we operate uh, the largest in the country, and so consequently, uh, and we've had to take over the responsibility of assisting supermarkets to distribute since the bombing of the 100,000 tonne uh, cold storage facility north of Kiev, which, which uh, was split into two operations, which was destroyed completely. So as far as the employees are concerned, all I can say is this. We have around 30,000 employees and up to a quarter of a million stakeholders at stake. And so the whole situation there, obviously, it's a matter of, of the company and its employees moving from what was denial through to acceptance very, very rapidly and then mobilising uh, ourselves on the ground. And I might add that the people on the ground uh, have done an amazing job, particularly the senior management uh, directing all our employees that are on the ground there fighting day in, day out. But at present, our facilities uh, at, have not been directly affected by the war, but the logistics side of the business, the distribution, is hazardous because with this humanitarian aid effort, it's caused a significant problems because one day there's a bridge there, one, the next day there's not. One day there's a road there, one day it's not. And so it's been a huge logistical challenge and the humanitarian effort there has changed the company from being a major exporter into a humanitarian uh, aid organisation. Yeah, and we noted that you are, are giving away uh, 330 tonnes per day of just the chicken. Um, uh, how do you characterise the need uh, inside Ukraine right now, especially given that there have been uh, so many sources of food uh, that have been destroyed, and even if the sources of food haven't been destroyed, the supply routes that have gotten food um, to uh, Ukrainians have dried up? Well, look, I think it's, it's no exaggeration to say that the, uh, MHP, which was... 50% of the market before the war is now pretty much 90% of the market for supplying animal type uh, protein and now responsible for the assistance of distributing other products. Right now, we've been assisting the Red Cross, obviously, and only just in within the last few days come to a collaborative agreement with the United Nations World Food Program. And that, I believe, will help us immeasurably. Uh, together in this agreement to be able to supply the humanitarian needs of the country and support our stakeholders uh, at the same time. You've talked a little bit, though, about how unpredictable this is. Uh, I mean, in terms of your employees and what you're doing to keep this, this running, how worried are you that as this conflict intensifies that there will be areas of the country that will be inaccessible? Well, look, there's no question that it's a clear and present danger. I mean, it's so unpredictable. Right now, the western areas are relatively protected uh, compared to the eastern and southern areas. Uh, at present, for MHP, its core focus is food security for the country and food sec uh, security collaterally for the world, because we also produce up to 3 million tonnes of grain, 
up to between 250,000 to 400,000 tonnes of sunflower oil. All these sorts of things from our cropping program are critical. And at present, we are about to sow the crops in the West so that we can meet our requirements, not only within Ukraine, but also to contribute to the global food shortage. Yeah, and I'm glad that you mentioned that. You know, in Soviet times, Ukraine was definitely one of the breadbaskets uh, that, you know, fed the Soviet Union. And, you know, Ukraine, certainly, as you just pointed out, at a certain point in time, would export a significant um, amount of whether it was their crops or, or any kind of, of, you know, of food industry that they had. What is at risk now globally, given that that kind of, um, you know, food production is at risk and will continue to remain at risk? Well, look, look at the facts. At present, last year's crop was around about 80 million tonnes of grains, OK? Normalised, that's around about 62 to 65 million tonnes. We had an exceptional season. But you've got to remember that this, this region, Ukraine and the southern Russian regions, produce around about 50% of the sunflower oil and sunflower products globally. Uh, it produces around about 20% of the grape seed and a quarter of the world's wheat supply. So, yes, it does have an enormous impact on global food security, particularly in the Middle East, uh, where generally because of Black Sea ports, that's the, the cheapest way for the Middle East to get their critical grain supplies. But it has a collateral effect on the animal feed industry in Europe, and that will see, for sure, uh, significant increases in, in food inflation throughout Europe and the United Kingdom. Interesting. I don't have a lot of time left, but I want to give you an opportunity in terms of your employees and the people who are out there in Ukraine. How difficult has it been on them for them to show up each and every day through this incredibly stressful time? Well, look, I mean, it's, it's psychologically, of course, it's devastating because what happens with a lot of families is that they uh, might work in our areas, but they often have families in Kharkiv, in Maripol, in Sumy, these areas. And, of course, a lot of their family have been able to be repatriated out of those areas, and some of them haven't. So, yes, psychologically, it's, it's, a, it's a huge issue. But I think that there's another all-important message too, and that is that in these sorts of war situations, we often have to rethink as a publicly listed company about the corporate governance aspects of what we're dealing with. I mean, we basically have the responsibility as a, as a corporate entity to all stakeholders, all stakeholders, and we must work together as a partnership. And that means not only our banks and our bondholders and our investors and our people, all are in this together in a war situation. And we have to do this if we're going to win this war. And it's important that we do for Western democracy, frankly.